Super. Oh, well, welcome, Facebook friends. Terrific. Whether you're watching now um, live or catching a replay, we're delighted that you're here. Um, I'm Missy Shipman, and I'm here with Julia, and we're delighted that you're here tonight. We're going to be making some fun um, summary cards, as well as a little bit of Christmas in July. Um, one of my favorite folds that was introduced to me recently is called a pinwheel card. So we're going to be working on this tonight. It's a, it's a really cool card that flips, and so it's very engaging. Um, and we'll be making that tonight, as well as some, some really nice summary cards. Can you folks hear me okay, those of you on Zoom? Yes, I can. Okay, terrific. Um, and one of the things, Julia, and I really have enjoyed about um, combining the Zoom with the Facebook is we get to see your smiles and see what you're working on and be engaged with you even more than we are with Facebook Live. So um, it's one step closer to being um, in person. <laughs> yeah. And things will be opening up this fall. Um, I think with the school year is really when things will be opening. So we'll be doing some in-person events again um, at the library. And Julia and I have been putting our heads together on how to best make that transition. So we'll keep you posted. Um, and uh, hoping to still keep in touch with people through Zoom and Facebook, through the Baldwinsville Public Library Facebook page, or through my Glad Heart, Missy's Glad Heart Studio page. Because um, we've all learned that, especially in inclement weather, um, or if you live a distance yes. away, it's so nice to get together um, just from the comfort of your own home. So tonight's a good example of that because it's pretty windy and wet. Uh, at least it's not dark <laughs> yet, but um, the rain, um, we don't want rain, rain to keep you away. So thanks for joining us tonight with Zoom and Facebook. So if you're here live, welcome, Sue. We're glad you're here. Um, we're going to begin with the card that um, it's everything's tucked into this white envelope for you. And there's the red and the green and the gold pieces. So we're, there's a lot of little pieces and parts in this one. Um, I think with spotlight my hands, so you'll be able to see, let's see if I can pin it maybe. Is mm -hmm. that gonna work okay? Can you see that large? So the, um, there's a lot of little pieces parts in there. So you wanna be careful as you, as you untuck them. And um, we've got uh, pieces inside here that are pre-cut and then some sticker sheets. These are kind of cardstock weight paper stickers that are already have the adhesive on them. And then there are the four uh, pieces of the, the pinwheel, sort of flaps of the pinwheel, okay? So what you'll need first is the square piece of designer series paper. It's got this wonderful gold foil and trees on the back, but the gold foil and those four pieces of red, the rectangles. And I have for you um, the dimensions on this so that if you wish, um, later to recreate them. And I'll post these pictures in the comments under um, when this gets posted in, uh, for the replay in Facebook. So, and I, I do apologize, it's, I seem to be a little blurry tonight, um, but these are the dimensions so that you can recreate this card. It's a really simple construction, but again, it's very, very engaging. So I'm gonna set those there for us. And, and then, so first what we're gonna do is just put together that basic, um, four square to kind of a tower. And you'll be using um, your multi-purpose adhesive. If you have the Tombow glue, this works very well. Um, you can also use a snail adhesive or a tear and tape. Uh, you want it to be a, a strong, a, a good grab because this, this is designed to be a really engaging card, an interactive card, okay? So we'll start by making the tower piece and you'll see it's a square. It's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I've scored it at one, two, three and four inches. So there's just a tiny little piece of um, a tiny little end part where we're gonna put our adhesive to wrap it around. Now I like for the red to be on the inside of my tower. This example has a different color inside. It has green. But for tonight, you get to choose if you want the green trees to kind of be a hint or if you want the red with the berries. And the way you decide, um, the way you fold it based on what you decide is whatever is, is getting covered up, folded inside, that's the part that's going to show just kind of as a sneak when people peek down the tower, okay? So if you, if you like me, want the red to show, we're gonna score on all those fold lines 
hold on all those score lines, I should say. And then we're going to put a little bit of he adhesive along here. Let me show you with this behind. Just that narrow quarter inch piece. We're gonna put a little thread of adhesive and then we'll fold this on top and that will just lock that, that piece and it makes a tower. So let's take our adhesive and dot, dot, not a lot. I'm gonna just make a thread here of, of glue. And then, like I said, you can kind of close up the tower and, and fold that so that it will um, lock. And we're making a tower or a tube. It's kind of like a periscope or a kaleidoscope. If you have questions as we're working along with this, just um, unmute yourself and, and ask me a question. I can also... Somehow we lost your sound, Missy. I'm not quite sure how. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was me. I can't do it. She went away. I can hold on for tonight, okay? Can you hear me? Now we can hear you again. Okay. Now you can, okay? Great. My internet said it was unstable this stormy night. All right. So now we have a tower. It's like a, like a periscope or a telescope little tube here. And what we need to do is add our four flaps. So these pinwheels are two and three quarter by four and a quarter inches. And what's clever about that is you can cut it just from one half sheet of cardstock. So this card, um, the base of the card really doesn't use a lot of supplies. What's fun is to add elements from your stash. And in this case, from the kit that I provided to you to, to dress it up. But the basic construction is very simple, okay? So what we'll do is start um, one side at a time. So you're looking at just one of those inch strips and putting adhesive there. Little goes a long way, remember, if you're using this multi-purpose glue. And then we'll place that along the seam, along that score line and just uh, give some pressure there. Okay. And then we're going to um, do the, the next one. You're just, you'll notice how it, it's going to keep flipping each time. So it eventually will have a, a red piece on every edge. So now we've got this one available to put adhesive on. Okay. And again, if you have questions or need me to step back with another instruction, just interrupt me. That's fine. Uh, because this glue um, just takes a moment to kind of grab the fibers of the paper, that's why I take time to just add pressure and, and not rush the process. So that will be a very nice permanent bond. Now, just carefully, you're going to keep flipping the card to expose more of those trees. We're going to cover them up. All right, so we've got two. We're halfway with our pattern here. Go ahead. And we'll put this third pinwheel on again, just right up to the seam. Apply pressure. Okay, and then the fourth one, just have one, one, one inch strip left to cover. I don't think we're a little crooked, but that's okay. Yeah, if you can kind of use um, your north and south here to kind of keep things lined up um, so that it, you've got a, that, that right angle at the seam here. Okay. And then now we've got four pinwheels and you can kind of just practice just moving it. And then we're going to, to embellish it. And this is the really fun part um, you can do it just the way I designed, or you can use the pieces differently as you wish. I'll wait just a minute till everybody's kind of at that place. If, as, as long, if you don't want to go along with it, it's okay too, but I want to make sure if you're working to, um, to make it alongside me that you, I can answer any questions. Mm 
And while I'm waiting, as you're completing that part, I'm gonna show you a couple other designs that I made with the same pinwheel design. So this is one that uses, um, it's called Flowering Cactus. It's a fun bundle um, that uh, again, I have a pocket for a gift card like we'll include tonight. Um, and these little felt flowers and different embellishments. But I, I just find it's a very engaging card and it's sized to fit in a regular envelope. So it's great for mailing or including with your presentation. This one is made with a paper pumpkin kit called Here's to You. And one of the things I love about our paper pumpkin kits is that pieces are already die cut and printed for me to, to just play with. So in this case, the, the tree die cuts were all this pretty peacock color but when you flipped it over, it's white on the other side. So it, it just gave me some versatility, um, some options. And in this case, I put my gift card in, um, not a diagonal, but a vertical opening. This one's fun that includes a shaker card element with it. And this is also from a paper pumpkin kit, which is currently available if you're looking for some fun, um, to me, it looks like summer, although it's really all year round with the stars and the trophies. World's Greatest it has friend or coach. Um, and that again is the pinwheel. And then one more uses a new kit that we have called Notes of Cheer. And this one, um, I love it has these laser cut butterfly pieces and some, some lovely rainbow images. And then I thought this was fun. I could make it so the butterfly would be like a flap here. Cool. Isn't that fun? All right. So if you're interested in any of those products, you can let me know too. I can help you out. But tonight we're doing fancy a little fancy. Why? Question? Fancy schmancy. Is that fun? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of fun. Okay. So really, the the sides are all the same now. There isn't a back or front yet. Um, so you're just going to lay it flat in in one position, and then we'll start um, putting it together. So. Again, it's up to you if you would like to make it the same as my sample, you can follow right along. If you'd prefer to just kind of watch tonight and then decide the pieces mix and match the way you want to do it, you're perfectly welcome to do that as well. But what we'll do is kind of go piece by piece here. And, and what's important when you're playing around with this design is that you, you, only can, you can't have anything hang over this edge, this two and three quarters by four and a quarter. You can't have items spilling over. It looks like there's plenty of room to spill over here, but what happens when you fold the card and move it is that becomes the left edge. So this part, this part here becomes the left edge. So you can't have anything hanging over or it won't fit in the envelope. It would be really cool to do if you weren't trying to mail it in a regular envelope, then you could fiddle a little bit more. But tonight we're going to make sure that our design elements stay within that um, two and three quarters by four and a quarter. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to pull out, and again, you can. You there's no one way to make this card. You could probably. I don't know the math. We'd have to. It's exponential to figure out all the different combinations. But these are lovely papers that are double sided. So you may find there's one side that you prefer over another. And again, just feel free to to make it your own. But to, for the ease of working together, I'm going to assemble it the same way. I did my original design. So I've adhered the, the um, red with the gold foil. I just love the sparkle of this paper. Pretty. And then I've got some tree stickers, okay? So I'm gonna take my large tree and stick it right onto the paper. And I'm gonna take my smaller tree and I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this one so that it pops up a little bit. You guys know I enjoy the, the layers and textures. And so the Stampin' Dimensionals, these foam adhesive dots help achieve that. Now, I don't want this tree to be sticky anymore. I'm thankful that Stampin' Up! made them sticky for me just for ease. But when you don't want sticky here, a couple things you can do. Um, you can put baby powder on this and that will take away the stickiness. You can just put it on your jeans a few times just kind of tap it on your pants, lift up, lift up. And that gives a little bit, takes away some of the tackiness. Um, and so those are ways to make it so it's less sticky here because I really just want the, um, the foam stickers to, to uh, enable the, 
tree to be popped off. Okay. So the next thing is we'll add our little greeting. Now this banner, you could um, stamp someone's name or write someone's name. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the greeting, let's celebrate. I'm gonna stamp it with my memento ink right in that banner so that it'll be ready to add to my card. Now in this situation, in this um, kind of card that has a lot of layers, you want to do any stamping before you put it together. Because once you've got the, the stars on here and the things that are popping up, um, the surface won't be very straight or smooth and it's harder to get a clean image. So any stamping you want to do, you want to do before you put the whole card together. So in this case, if you're not sure what you want to do on your label, just set that, keep that in the envelope and you could always add that element later. Now we've got some stripes to put on this side of the card. There we go. Again, it's got that really nice gold shine. And then we're ready to flip to the next side. Now what I'll do um, is post these pictures in the comments after tonight. So if you aren't able to stay with me um, through the class or to keep up that pace, then you can go back to complete the elements, okay? So I'm gonna fold it over. And now I have another side to play with, another piece. And this one, I'm going to use uh, one of my deer stickers. Now, I gave you extra ones, so you can pick the deer that you would like to, to feature on your card, or you can put more than one um, because you, you're the, designer with these elements. But I'm going to take the, the male deer here with the antlers and have him, he's going to be at the ready here. But I want to give a background for him. So I'm looking for the piece of paper that has the gold and, and green trees on it. These almost look like pine cones too. I think it's really cool. And we will adhere this. I enjoy the concept of Christmas in July and getting ready for holiday times, doing a little bit throughout the year rather than everything at the end. When it gets to be December, things are so busy. Um, it's sometimes difficult to make that time for personal crafting. So I try throughout the year to work on projects so that I'm ready with special gifts or cards for the holiday. There's my dear. And because I use the dimensionals, he, it creates that little bit of shadow. And so he's standing out a little, he's not quite as camouflaged. He's kind of um, standing out a little bit more. And you'll notice on my sample here, I use these, these stars. They're, they're, they are made of plastic, but they look really like metal and they have a sticky on them already. So you'll find in your packet, you have, I think five or six um, little stars and they already have the adhesive on them. So I'm going to use my rule of three or of odd numbers and position them kind of in a triangle shape to move the viewer's eye around the card. But you again can put them wherever you like. See how they really jump? Um, they're, they're thick and sub substantial. And we want the deer to have some friends here. So we're gonna find the paper that has the collage of the deer and put that on the side. So we're halfway already with the pinwheel card. Assuming anybody's keeping up with you, that's... <laughs> I know, and I don't mean to rush, but you know I always have so much to share exactly, that I try yeah. to move along and know that people can look back at the pictures and, and rewatch the video. Yeah, we but, can always finish <laughs> up later. Yes, I know I move quickly. And it, it's fun too, like I said, you really can't go wrong. You might prefer to focus on a different picture. Oh, nice work, nice work, Julia. <laughs> um, you know, there's, you'll have extra pieces in parts, so you can make yours different from mine if you like. 
Isn't that fun how it's so engaging, Julia? I just, it's really fun to play with. So we're gonna take another layer now, our third side. And this one uh, is where I made a little pocket. So I first am going to adhere this nice red star paper. And then I have this pocket of the stripes. So let's first put the, the base card down. There's more of those deer. You might really like the deer and not want to cover them up. <laughs> and then this is the, the corner pocket. So for the corner pocket, we just want a thin line of adhesive on two of the sides, the right angle of the triangle so that there's a pocket to put the card in, a gift card or a little bit of cash or a love note. It's not quite wide enough for a tea bag I found. You know I love tea, uh, but it's a little tricky. There we go, Julia. Yeah, you can mix and match. I like it where more deer show. <laughs> I do like the deer. There's lots of options. And then these fun candy canes. I really love the, the fanciful, um, kind of whimsical design of this. So I'm gonna add those candy canes, but there's pretty red stripes on the back of the candy cane if you wanna switch it up. And I have some stickers with candy canes on them and they may be a little different from mine. They are, some are red and white and some are red and green stripe and sort of that nice almost pink color that's the shaded. So you'll you'll have, everybody should have four of those to pick from. Yes, perfect, Julia. Yes, yeah, so you can just put, and I didn't pop that one up, I just put it flat down there, but you can, you can do whatever you like. Then there's, we're ready to slide in that card. You do wanna let that pocket dry. If you put the card in too soon, it might get stuck <laughs> and they wouldn't be able to take out their gift. Do you have any tricks for getting the um, the paper that you're putting on top centered, or are you just eyeballing it? And... The triangle piece? Yeah. No, the um oh. the square. Okay. Um, there is about a quarter inch around each of each edge, so it's um I guess it's an eighth of an inch because I it's measured a quarter head. So if you kind of eyeball. Um, so the, the distance will be the same, the, the spacing or the mat will be the same at the top as it is at the side. It's right. a little when, when I start off, I can line it up that way, but then when I actually put the glue on, I have to pick it up to do that. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, let's see what I, I guess, the, the best tip I have is just knowing that it's going to be um, equal around all four edges. Um, it's a little hard to eyeball because we've got this red right next to it. So it's a little trickier to, to line up. Um, and I, I always just remind myself and others that it is handmade with love. So it's um, going to be, if it's, it's a little bit not centered, then that's just because I made it with love for you. Okay. <laughs> so that's okay. But, but yes, um, also grid paper can help. Um, if you, if you like to have things with precision, um, pieces of grid paper can help you kind of center. You can find the, the middle line of something and measure to the, to the left and to the right. Um, but I tend to let the stamps dance and let the paper, paper dance because it's handmade with love. But I do respect that desire to have them straight, especially with, with like the contrasting color. Like here that white and green really stands out, right? So it's nice if that, is straight with the border around. Okay, for our last side, we're going to put this fun present paper with polka dots and stars and stripes. This makes me very happy. This doesn't have to be just for Christmas time. Um, it could be, certainly it's colors for a holiday, but it um, is festive for other occasions. Yeah, when I put it down, Julia, I just tend to look around that top edge so that I'm kind of going oh, no. equally. Um, no, and then we'll finish it won't like be that much longer, star. I think. The star on there like this. 
So you'll have some extra pieces and parts. You can um, add them to your card itself, or you could put them on the envelope. For example, let's see where my envelope went. Um, I might decide to put this pretty holly. I didn't put it anywhere in my book, but I really like it. So I can have it just at the corner of my envelope, a little sticker there, um, and maybe one on the back flap to kind of tie it together. But you'll have some extra deer and some extra candy canes in those little holly pieces. So you can use them how you like. But what do you think? Is it fun? Is this a fun card you might want to try to make again with other supplies too? Oh yeah, it's very fun. I like ones that move. I like cards me, that move. Me too. The, the interactive ones, because I love being a paper engineer. Uh, I love teaching others to be paper engineers. And we're scientists tonight and artists as we're doing the math and, and figuring it out. Um, my family, my boys and my husband are my favorite critics and they really love when something moves and when there's texture. So they like this gold paper, this foil paper is just lovely to touch. Um, when things are popped up, they like that. And then these stars, right? They're very, very engaging. So I love to think about um, textures on cards um, for people who have limited vision as well, uh, because it's a really tactile experience. So even if they can't necessarily read or see all of the patterns very clearly, um, they can be engaged this way um, with, with touch. So any kinds of embellishments um, that have height or different textures, whether it's felt like this, my cactus sets that have these felt flowers, those are really um, engaging to touch as well. Um, or or an, ele an element like these stars. So this one doesn't have any ribbon on it, but you could certainly add bows um, as you wished. Um, let's see, there's there's lots of ways you can alter it. It's just a, a really, really fun, fun, engaging card. So I hope you'll enjoy that. And uh, so you can surprise and delight someone in July for a little Christmas gift, or you can tuck it away. Don't lose it. Put it someplace where you'll be ready to send it out at Thanksgiving time. Great, Julia. Oh, I love it. I yeah. love it. I love it because it looks difficult, but it's actually not that hard once you do exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. You just keep in mind that very basic um, start of the yeah. power. And that's just the four and a quarter by four and a quarter scored yeah. four, three, two, one. And then the four pinwheels. So, and this can be adapted to different sizes too. Since you love it, maybe we'll mm -hmm. do a five by seven card later on this year. Um, it's 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 math that once you understand the trick of the math, it's um, it's really quite simple. But like Jean said, the, the card appears more of a wow card, and yet it's um, it's not difficult. So I'm glad you enjoyed that. Yeah, I love it. Great. <laughs> not sure if I missed something, but does this piece go with this one, or is this for a different card? Yep. Yep, that goes, uh, I used it on my card okay. to make the let's celebrate Great. above where I put the trees. Um, but you can save it for something different too. Um, what's fun about the pinwheel card is you get to decide kind of what's the front, you know, like, so when somebody takes it out of the envelope, that's maybe the, the front. Um, they may never put it back to that as the front. Um, if you want there to be a spot that's more um, kind of like the back, on this one, I left a piece just white with a tiny little embellishment. And that's where I would sign my note to somebody. So this card, I didn't really do that. I just put color everywhere. Um, I would maybe tuck a note in with the gift card um, or add a, add a piece of white to write on. But um, I love that it's just anywhere you look, you see that, that mm -hmm. happy color. Super. Very cool. Great, okay, terrific. Now our next cards is a trio of cards that are these happy summery colors. And um, they, there's not a lot of stamping in these. We're just gonna add a greeting. So if you have some stamps that you wanna pull out to put greetings, you can, or you can handwrite a message, um, or you could put them and just not have that label embellishment on it. And I think I've shared in the past that, um, you know, when you make a card, sometimes you already know right as you're making it who you're sending it to. But sometimes you just want to work on a stash and have a, you know, a pile of cards for when you need them. It might be for a sympathy card or a get well or a birthday. And so you may choose, for example, this one here. 
Um, it's designed to add a greeting on this white part. I'll see, you'll have an oval like this. Um, but, but you may, it doesn't really require that. Uh, we're gonna stamp a word there, but it could be someone's name. It could be a little scripture that you write. So it doesn't have to be rubber stamps and ink. Um, and sometimes you'll wanna just kind of keep, keep it at the ready so that the rest of the card is put together and then you just need to add a greeting that's appropriate. So um, most often in my business, as I'm making cards, I, um, I make them for other, to teach other people how to make them. Um, but I also like to keep in mind, how would I use this card? I want it to be a useful um, greeting. Sometimes we have um, lovely cards, but we're not quite sure what the occasion is for the card. So um, I, do, I try to keep that in mind, a card that can be adapted to a thank you or a birthday um, or an all occasion greeting. So let's start with the one that's blue with lots of gold tonight. This has gold elements. Inside, you'll also find some baker's twine, some blue twine and a piece of gold ribbon. Yes, everybody has this one. And like I said, these three cards have very little stamping. They're much more um, a card that celebrates, you know, layers and texture. So we've got the paper that has the gold embossing in it. We have um, the baker's twine texture and then the satin ribbon. I just, I love the feel of this. Um, one of my favorite gifts to give a, a new baby is called a taggy. And it's like a fleece, a little fleece square that has these satin ribbon tags. Babies love to, to feel the tags, um, the satin. So this kind of ribbon always makes me think of, of those taggy blankets that I like to make. So in this case, um, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp first. And again, you get to decide if you want to, um, to stamp or write or leave it blank right now, that's fine. We're going to use a stamp that says love. I think this is, would be a pretty one for a wedding or any kind of celebration or a birth. Love is nice for, for all kinds of occasions. Um, this is a stamp set called Create with Friends. We're gonna use the Celebrate tonight and we'll also use the Love. And this is designed so that you can um, combine the fonts. So it can be Let's Celebrate or Celebrate You or Best Friends or create together. You can mix and match all of the greetings. So it's a really versatile set. And we'll start by using the word love. And I'm stamping with my favorite black ink, the Memento Tuxedo Black. And I'm just gonna carefully stamp the word love down and up. And now that's ready um, to put on the card. So this would be lovely for a wedding or an anniversary or a love note to someone that you love. Um, we're going to take this pretty satin ribbon and just trim the edges so that they're, um, I call it like a dove, swallow tail. Um, sometimes it's called a banner tip or a banner end. There's a couple ways you can do this. If you fold it in half, we're going to, I mean, it's hard for you to see it on camera, but I'm gonna fold the satin ribbon in half and then I'm gonna cut just one straight cut from the open edge over to the fold in a triangle shape. And that's gonna make that swallowtail piece. Okay, so I'm gonna do that again. Fold the ribbon in half. Okay, and then I'm gonna just make one triangle cut. And then I have that swallowtail. So that's gonna layer onto my card, sort of in the center. And it's going to be covered up by this. So I don't really have to worry too much about my adhesive. I'm gonna go ahead, put a little bit of the um, multi-purpose Tombow down in the middle there, and then cover it up with this ribbon. Okay, just sort of smooth it so that even though the adhesive is coming through here, that doesn't concern me because I'm going to cover it up. Let me see if I can see everybody doing it here. Great. All right. So again, this is a card. If you're not sure how you want to uh, use this card, you can do this other assembly piece and then just keep this for when you're ready. 
um, I hope that makes sense. Like I said, sometimes it's, I love when I have the person in my heart, in my head and in my heart while I'm making it because I can be thinking of them as I create it. Um, but there are times when you, you really want to, you know, enjoy the creative process and, and make a stash of cards. Now the baker's twine is long enough, I believe it's 24 inches, that we can wrap it around two times. So we're gonna wrap around the full card front and then around, is that right or did I not make it? Nope, I guess it just goes one time and then has a, a big bow. Let me check my notes. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna leave a long tail and wrap it around and then tie. And maybe it's a little, it might be too long, but it's okay, we can trim it. Sometimes with this thin baker's twine, I like to cut it extra long so you can wrap it more than one time. I want my bow to be over to the right part of the right side part of the card so that it will be off to the side of my label. There we are. So then we'll tie this like you're tying your shoe. Okay. And if the tails are a little too long for you, you can trim them off. I'm going to trim them down a little bit. There we go. And then I can put my greeting piece on with dimensionals. So it's just going to elevate, kind of pop off the page. I love that these have that stitched edge that's very popular in um, paper crafting trends is that um, kind of a nod to stitching, right? To sewing, where there's that stitched edge all the way around the white label. And I can just tuck that in and it is complete. So again, what's engaging about this card to me is that gold foil. It really catches my eye. Um, and also the sensory pieces of touching the different text textures, the, um, the twine and the satin ribbon. And that's card number one in the trio of these sort of summary cards. Oh, there's a here. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then just, yeah. Yeah. I'll leave this here for a minute. And the next one we'll work on will be the green card. So you can, when you finish up with your blue one, you can pull out the supplies for the green one. This has balloons. It's a really fun um, party card, I think. I hope you all enjoyed Independence Day weekend and had a good time yeah. maybe with your family and friends. Um, did anybody have a picnic? Yeah, a simple one. Good. Yeah, we had hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill. Yeah. Was, and that, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I didn't. Um, oh, salt potatoes. I did do that. <laughs> My mother-in-law used to make great potato salad, and, but I thought about it too late. We were talking that night and reminiscing and missing her and remembering the potato salad. So um, we're just going to do potato salad for another summer day. It won't be the 4th of July, but we'll remember her again on another day. Um, she liked to make potato salad with big um, slices of hard-boiled eggs on the top, almost covering the top oh, of it. Pretty. Oh, yes. So delicious. <laughs> Oh, well done. Love it. <laughs> so as you gather your supplies for the green one, you can just, there's a lot of pieces and parts. This one has several little, little pieces of that baker's twine in it. One long piece and three short pieces. So just kind of gather those and then I'll, in a moment we can start that card. We've had lots of corn on the cob this summer and watermelon. Um, watermelon's watermelon been is a good. Bag, though. I don't know if you've had good luck with watermelon this year. We had one that's not good. And oh, you don't, the one I had was good. You don't know until you, <laughs> you start eating it. But, um, but the other many times we've had watermelon has been, have been delicious. So I, it didn't put me off for too long. 
Do any of you enjoy berry picking? Have you done any? I haven't this year, but I like to. I went to go blueberry. I didn't uh -huh. do strawberries. And yeah, I didn't do strawberries this year. Uh huh. But I want. I would like to do blueberries. Uh huh. I've only done blueberries once, but I've done strawberries um, quite a few times. This year, terrific. There's Not nothing. There's nothing like fresh strawberries, is there? It's just yeah. right picked from the from the um, bush right there from the plant. You can't beat it. Um, we have some great pictures that came up on my memories recently of berry picking with Billy when he was like three. And you know, it's just mm. just you know, one for the basket, one for Billy, one for the basket, one for Billy, and just covered with the juice and such happy memories of enjoying the the fruit. Um, but I haven't picked for several years. I've been just doing shortcuts and picking them up at the market, but yeah, I love them. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at the green card. Um, we have the card base and it's the same um, on the front and the back. So there isn't really a, a front or back for this. You're just gonna, the white will be on the inside obviously. And then we have this kind of grid and this will be on the, the card base, just to add again, texture. Um, this one I like to, to actually put flat because it's got all these pieces. I don't want them to catch too much. And if I put it up with the dimensionals, it would be more likely to kind of catch or tag or you know grab and cut. So I'm going to put my adhesive in the corners here. And if you wanna do a, a light thread around the edges, you can. And that, that will center in the card. Is there a trick to getting all the little pieces out or are you just doing one? Oh, back? you just I'll have just to push on one side. Yep. Yeah, I sorry, mine I already popped out. Um yeah, you just have to take your time um and carefully poke. Sometimes the um the machine that's die cut them, um sometimes there's a little piece you have to kind of pull away, but they're one meant time, to each one's one time meant you, to you showed us uh using a toothpick to poke the little bits out. Yes, especially when they're like a little circle or a little tiny um, in between the words of like an A that has the letter inside the A to poke out. That's a good tip too. So these should just kind of pull away when you um, when you pop them out. Okay, and then we have our three balloons. And um, before we adhere them, we're going to add the little tails to the the balloon so if you flip them over so that the white side shows and if you have dimensionals you can use the dimensionals if you don't you can um, use other adhesive but what you want to do is we're going to kind of anchor that um that thread so i'm going to peel off the dimensionals and i'm going to take one of the shorter there's three short threads and one long okay so I'm gonna take one of the short ones and I'm just going to put it over my adhesive. So if I didn't have dimensionals, I should have shown you that. I would just put a little bit of glue and, and anchor the, the string to that. There. I think this is a fun birthday card for anyone. It's a, it's a, or it wouldn't even have to be birthday. It could be just a celebration card. Um, but it, it's um, these happy colors, and everybody loves balloons, right? So we're going to take those balloons and just kind of place them. I'm going to have them go outside of the, the white a little bit. Like the white is kind of the frame or the green is kind of the frame around the white, but I wanna have them be sort of out of the box. Make it seem almost like they're, they're moving, like the balloons are floating a little bit because they're, they're outside of the, the line. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So see where the white rectangle is, I'm having the balloons kind of bursting away from it to make it look like they're in motion.
It's so nice having you with me tonight. It's fun crafting with friends. Mm -hmm. to be together. The little stickers that come with this are kind of like, um, uh, what would we call it? Tassels. 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 Yes. And there, I'm just going to add them to the little parts, edges of the balloon there so that it adds a little more sparkle. Like that. Again, the gold foil I really enjoy on our projects tonight. I'm so glad you don't grade us on this. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> no, I always say that I love standing up because I can still be a teacher, but no report cards. <laughs> I was a teacher before my, um, before my boys were born. I taught elementary school for nine years, and I loved it. It was a wonderful chapter of my life. Um, but I was also so privileged to have the chance to be at home with the boys. So I could be a stamp at home mom and um, be a part of their school, you know, volunteering in their school and, um, and still having that, um, the identity of being a teacher has been, meant a lot to me over these years. But remember, they're handmade with love and whoever is blessed to receive these cards from you um, is very grateful. Um, so you, you know that they're handmade with love and the little imperfections make them um, personalized, so. Oh, and we're learning all the time too. So each time you are a part of one of our workshops, hopefully it's helping you learn another still, another strategy, another technique, another skill that you can apply to, to crafting that you do outside of our class. So um, just consider them learning projects and, um, but, but send them away still. Make sure people get to see the things you make. So what I've done is kind of, uh, is made a knot um, connecting those three smaller strings and then I'm going to tie a bow just like I'm tying my shoes um, to, to connect it. Now if you're not a big fan of bows you can just make a knot or you can leave that step off because we're actually going to um, put a label here and um, or you can just leave the card as is and not like I'm going to trim my ribbons a little bit my tails here but this card certainly looks complete just like this um, but I'm going to go ahead and put my label. I'm going to pull that down just a tiny bit. I'm going to stamp and then put my label here. But you don't, you remember, you could use the materials any way you like. So you might choose to save the label for another project or use it on the inside um, because this, this is fun even, even like this. Um, but we're going to go ahead and stamp the word celebrate. This is also from that stamp set, Create with Friends. I love the font. It's very... Um, whimsical, cheerful um, lettering. And so I'm going to ink up with this blue color called Dapper Denim. It's a retired color that I, I really love. And we're going to stamp that celebrate so that it's ready to add to the balloons. Um, and I'm going to add it with dimensionals. So again, it's popped up off of the page. like this. I'm going to put it kind of at a little angle. Just um, sometimes we do things at an angle on purpose because it's hard to make them straight. <laughs> and so this it's forgiving when you put it on an angle at per, on purpose. Um, and I have a good friend, Glenda, who lives in Florida now. She was a demonstrator friend from Illinois for, she was a demonstrator for a long time. And um, she, even when she'd stamp inside a card, she would always do it at an angle because then it, it wasn't, didn't matter. She was intentionally trying to make it um, just whimsical rather than straight on with precision. So there's our second trio card here of summertime fun. So we're, the last one we're going to use is um, the, the pink one tonight. We'll complete. That'll be our last project to complete tonight. Okay. 
Oh, time really what, flies, doesn't it? What's that, Julia? Time really flies, doesn't it? It does. I know. My goodness. I was going to say, too, I, I get all mixed up on the days lately. Um, the days of the week get kind of confused. Um, we were able to sell my mother-in-law's house. Um, it was on the market just 13 days. And um, so we're delighted. We, we had it painted this spring and spruced up, you know, had trees removed and bushes and stuff, did new mulch. And, um, and we're, we're so happy we have a buyer who's moving here from Seattle, Washington area. Um, we're excited Ooh. to meet her because she'll be a neighbor to us. It's kind of a unique situation. Toddy's house was right here on our street. So um, we're excited to get to welcome her. Um, but we've been obviously busy every day <laughs> working on processing things and trips to Goodwill and friend, connecting with friends for donation to give donations and, um, and taking pictures of furniture and figuring out what to keep. And so, but it's been kind of a nice healing um, through sort of grieving process um, to go through things that she touched and things that she loved. And um, we moved her nine years ago to this area. So we'd already done a lot of downsizing for her and processed a lot of things, but there were still, <laughs> there still are plenty of things. So I don't know if others of you have had that experience, but it's kind of exhausting. Oh, but yes. it's, also, it's also a healing process for us too, I think. So, um, but so my days are kind of all mixed up. I've just been, been busy with that process. Uh, looking forward to having it kind of resolved a little bit more in the in a month or so. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on our final card. This is the pink one. Uh, there's one side of your card that has stripes. The other side is just a solid pink. So you can decide what you want to be the base of your card. I love the stripes, so I'm gonna keep that at the front. And then this one has a, a label that's already printed with the flowers and that nice gold foil. And it has some of the gold satin ribbon and some more of the baker's twine, okay? Now the label for this one, I'm going to stamp using a stamp set that's from a paper pumpkin kit. So I wanted to show you, um, a lot of you I've shared already about our paper pumpkin kits, but this is um, the one that was just sent out this past month. Paper Pumpkin is a subscription kit that you can order from Stampin' Up. And I'll be using these more in our business too in the coming months, um, because what I love about it is it includes everything you need right in the box. It has the stamps, the ink. This one actually came with two ink colors. And then it's like a present, it's all wrapped up for you. And then inside are the, the things you need to make the project. So in this case, it makes nine beautiful cards that um, are these, these bright, vibrant colors. Uh, usually the kits are kind of seasonal in terms of colors and design. And this is lovely. It has some really special vellum elements to it. But the stamp set, I think, is kind of the star of the show in this one. So I'm using tonight, um, let's see, we'll, we'll pick one that fits on here. But there's um, sending hugs, congratulations, thanks for everything, these lovely, um, this kind of a splotchy um, background image, you are amazing, and then some floral images. So we're, let's see what would fit nicely. One of the advantages to photopolymer is I can kind of lay it over my, lab, my label or what a, my sentiment piece and see how it would fit. So we could do congratulations, sending hugs, this nice big thanks would fit really nicely in there. And I think that's what I'm gonna use. I always need thank you cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my thanks image. There we go. And we're going to stamp that right inside the, the label here. So again, you can write someone's name or a special personal message or a scripture or a verse that you love um, in this label or this card like some of the other ones, is really complete even without a, a greeting label. You'll see how it comes together nicely. Again, just celebrating those textures. All right, so here is the, um, the label we're going to put down. I'm going to put that one flat because my other thing, my other label, I'm going to pop up with dimensionals. I love dimensionals, and so sometimes my card will have many layers kind of tiered. But in this case, I want that label to really pop off. 
So I'm going to um, secure this one flat. All right. Again, that gold foil, I think, is really pretty on these. I'm going to center that. And now for the last card, what we did was we did the swallowtail end. For this one, I'm just going to make a um, diagonal cut. Okay, so it's just a uh, um, diagonal edge. I'm going to do that over on this side too. But you could you could cut it whatever way you like. So it's just going to be like this. Um, because my label is going to go on top, I'm not going to worry about adhesive showing again. So I'm going to just do a couple dots across and put my ribbon down because I know that's going to be covered up. Okay. So I'll use dimensionals to pop that up. Don't these three cards look pretty together? Yeah. They're probably to different people, but they are lovely. Or maybe you could tuck it aside and have it for a special person. You send that person one a month and then they'll have the full set. It's up to you. There we are. There's the thanks. And then did your what did I already tie your bows for you? Maybe some oh. of you, not everybody. Okay, because mine, when I took out my envelope, I had already tied the bow and I thought, oh, maybe I did that for everybody. <laughs> but maybe not. Um, you can make your, your did you use the fancy fork trick for those? This one I just did in the air. I did in the air. Um, I know, and I always feel like I want to be better prepared with that fork trip trick. How about next time I'm prepared and I'll have um, a hair pick because the hair pick is a little bit wider and that's even easier to demonstrate with. So I'm going to um, make a little note hair pick um, for August. Okay. So I'll be sure to be best prepared so we can show the fork bow, but with the hair pick, which is a little stronger. Thanks, Julia. <laughs> All right, so this bow can kind of just tuck in. I'm gonna put a little dot of the Tombow multi-purpose glue. If you have a glue dot, you could use that. A nice trick with the um, Tombow glue is if you if you put your glue there and then you just go do something else for a few minutes, let it, um, let it set. It, it gets to be more tacky and, um, and less wet. So it works almost like a glue dot. Um, and it, it's, it's gonna move around less. It's gonna be more, more tacky and it will grab the twine. So if you're, if you're working on a bunch of things, you can you know, put some glue in certain places and then go do something else, have a cup of tea, go for a little walk. And when you come back and you put it on, it's gonna be less, um, wet. It's less likely to kind of smear around. So here's our third third card with those lovely colors and that my gold foil. Does anybody have any questions? No. No, oh, it's fun. I'm so glad. It's such a joy to be together. Uh, let me just look and see if there are any other, if anybody has questions here, I can check the chat. Oh, good. Julia says she wants to show off your work. Terrific. I want to see. <laughs> so let's unpin me. Let's see. Can you do that, Julia? Let's see. Yes, I did. I think now people. There, now I can see you. Great. People will see whoever's speaking. So it yes. just over to me in a second here. Um, can everybody see me big or not? Yes, I yes. can I see you. Okay. Good. okay. <laughs> so I did some fun things with my card. I have cool. This nice little scene there. This little yeah. scene there. Oh, that's cute. And then this little scene here. I don't know if you can see in the center there. Is the oh, deer. the deer, yes. You have a deer on the uh, thing. Uh huh. Beautiful. Oh, I'm glad you put the holly in there. Or I guess it's maybe mistletoe. I'm not sure. What was that? Mistletoe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very nice. And the star on the top of the tree. Yeah. <laughs> That's what my family always says. So. Great. We usually have an angel, but I like both traditions. Yeah. And oh, I'm, I'm glad you use the deer. They're fun everywhere, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. And I put the little triangle here because I had put this too high. Uh-huh. And so I figured I needed something at the bottom. 
so I what a great design that. element yeah that looks wonderful and it balanced the colors mm -hmm. yep the green pulled them from the other side oh that's lovely thank you julia anybody else would like to show <laughs> pretty much copied you <laughs> okay <laughs> Susan, you've been working right along. Do you have one to show us? Uh, not really. I, okay. Well, I didn't quite finish this one. Um, Do you like the colors? Which one was your favorite tonight that we made, Susan? No, I do like the colors of this one. Great. But the Christmas ones will be fun. And, and I have some extra pieces that might be like little tags for gifts and things. Good. I did want to mention that in your kit too were these um, these little cards. Let me yeah, see that. So yeah, so these are actually called memories and more cards. And um, what's fun about them is they're sized um, as kind of a standard photo size, like four by six or um, three by four, which is half of the four by six. So you got, everybody got a, different ones, um, but they're double sided cards. And they're wonderful um, for memory keeping, for scrapbooking. They're a great size because they complement the size of photos. Um, and we have uh, some pages that you can slip in if you're looking for a quick and easy kind of way to do scrapbooking or, or um, memory keeping. But the, and then many of them have sort of like journaling prompts on them where you can you can write. Um, oh. So these are called memories and more and. Um, Stampin' Up! always has different ones every season. So um, these are just some fun ones that usually they come with some stickers too, similar to the stickers we used for our pinwheel card. Um, and then the variety of cards, again, that are both four by six and two by three. So those were just kind of a bonus for you to, um, to make something fun or to just include it. Lots of times if I um, have to mail something to someone, um, even a bill, uh, check for a bill, um, or if someone's picking up a porch pickup at my house or something, you can just jot a quick note on these and it just adds a little color and um, design. So, so those were just a little bonus for you with the Christmas in July theme. And um, it's been a delightful evening. I thank you. Thank you again, yes, Julia. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. 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 I love that first card. Oh, I'm so glad. I look forward to seeing what you make. More, more pinwheels. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. I really like well, that. I hope, I hope you all have a wonderful month ahead. Um, enjoy July. And um, yeah. we'll see you in August. And that in August, we should have a little more details for you about what's next as we transition to some in-home um, or in-person activities. Um, and again, it's, it's been my great pleasure. So uh, big thanks to Julia and to the Baldwinsville Public Library. Yeah. Yep. Have Thank a great you. night, everybody. Thank you, Julia. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.